In the previous video, I showed you how you could take um, the characteristic equation, which you get from taking the determinant of this 8 minus uh, lambda i matrix, setting it equal to 0. Uh, we found the eigenvalues uh, lambda equals 1 or lambda equals 3. Uh, now I want to focus on the eigenvalue lambda equals 1 and find answer this second part of the question, find a basis for the corresponding eigenspace. So in this video, I'm focusing on the eigenvalue lambda equals 1. Uh, I'm going to make a second video where I focus on the other eigenvalue. But you would solve that um, problem the same way we solved this one here. Uh, okay, so, so the eigenspace uh, corresponding to lambda equals 1 is actually the null space of the matrix A minus uh, now we have 1 for our lambda, 1 times i. So in this case, just a minus i. Um, the reason that we look at the null space of this matrix uh, is because what we're finding is the set of uh, vectors x, so that a times x is equal to lambda times x, in this case, 1 times x. And when we move that over to one side, ax minus uh, 1 times x equals the 0 vector, uh, then I can write this as a minus 1 times i x equals the 0 vector. And so now I've described the null space. The, the set of solutions to this homogeneous equation is uh, the null space of this matrix a minus lambda i. So that's why we're looking at the null space. Uh, now the a minus, uh, in this case, 1 times i matrix well, I guess let me just write, here's the matrix A, 1, negative 1, 4. And in this case, we're subtracting 1 times the identity matrix of the same size, so a 3 by 3 identity matrix. And so just like when we found the, the general matrix A minus lambda I in the last example, when we were finding eigenvalues, I pointed out that all we're doing is subtracting lambda from the diagonal entries. So same deal here. All you're doing is subtracting lambda from the diagonal entries, and this time you have a specific value for lambda. So we don't write minus lambda. We're going to actually subtract the value 1 uh, here along the, along the diagonal. So let's bump this up. So we're actually finding uh, the null space of the matrix. I don't know how great this my notation usage is here, but you know what I mean. Uh, 2 minus 1, leave these two entries alone, 2 and now 1 minus 1, let me actually highlight these diagonal entries in, in uh, red here, so 1 minus 1, so I get 0 here, and then let me go ahead and move to the, the next diagonal entry, so 4 minus 1, so 3 here. Every other entry remains the same, uh, so I had a 2 here, 1 and negative 1 here, so we're finding the null space for that matrix. So what we're doing, um, I mean, I could just set this up as an augmented matrix if, if I want to, or if you want to. Uh, so just set it up with a constant row of zeros here and solve the system. Okay, so we could do that by um, first, I mean, the row operations here might feel pretty trivial to you at this point. You've been using them so much. But I'll do uh, negative 2 times row 1 and add that to row 2. I'll also do uh, negative row 1 and add that to row 3. So that'll get me a 0 in, that, um, in this entry here. So I'm leaving row 1 alone. Uh, let's see, negative 2 plus 2, negative 2 plus 0, and then negative 2 times this, so positive 2 plus 2 and then 0 plus 0. And then in the last row, negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 plus negative 1, uh, negative, negative, so positive 1 plus 3, and 0 plus 0. And you've probably noticed um, at this point, when you get two rows that are exactly the same like that, so on the next step we can turn one of those rows in, uh, to 0, and, and we should. Uh, so I'll do negative row 2 plus row 3 to zero out that third row. So 
So I have 0 plus 0, uh, positive 2 plus negative 2, negative 4 plus 4, and 0 plus 0. Okay. Uh, okay, and I'm going to get this for, well, let me back up here, sorry. Get a bit overexcited. Okay, so we've got a row of zeros. Um, so we know that the, this is going to have, um, or this is a dependent system. It's going to have infinitely many solutions. X3 is going to be a free variable. So for systems like this, I, I like to go all the way to uh, the reduced row echelon form. I find it easier to um, parameterize my, my solution set if I get it all the way, rather than using back substitution. I like to go all the way to the reduced form. Um, so I'm going to do negative 1 half times row 2 to get that positive 1 as my pivot. Pivots can be um, numbers other than positive 1, but it's nice in the reduced form if you can get it to a positive 1. And then so this will be negative 2 and then 0. And now last thing, I'd like to get a 0 in this entry here. So I'm going to do negative row 2 plus row 1. So that will give me 0 here. And then positive 2 plus that negative 1. So positive 1 now. OK. And so now we just need to describe this uh, solution set. So that first row is telling us that x1 plus x3 is equal to 0, which means x1 is equal to negative x3. The second row is telling us that x2 minus 2x3 is equal to 0, which if you move over, so if we solve for x2, that's equal to 2x3. And so uh, the solution set, x1, x2, x3, looks like this. x1 is equal to negative x3 x2 is equal to 2x3, and then x3 is the free variable. It can be whatever it wants. So here's where once you get it in this form, we sometimes introduce a parameter. You don't have to, but since x3 is the free variable, we can let just whatever parameter you want to use. I'll use t equal x3. Uh, then the solution set here can be written as t times negative 1. There's our negative x3 positive 2, positive 1. Those are just our multiples of x3 where we're replacing x3 with the parameter t. Um, and this is where t is any uh, real number. So what we've described here is the solution set actually as a span. Um, the null space of this a minus 1 times i oops, um, matrix is actually equal to the span of this one uh, vector negative 1 2 1 and so this right here is a basis for the eigenspace uh, corresponding to lambda equals 1 which we uh, write as uh, e subscript 1